Good morning. It is day six here at Olympic Trials. I'm Caitlin Sandino, and we are here with race expert Carolyn <laughs> Joyce. Carolyn, I thanks like that for being title. Here. <laughs> yeah, you are my race expert. <laughs> Speaking of races, last night a lot of really exciting races. What were your impressions of last night? Last night, so we had day five of Olympic Trials, and this meet is eight days. So as much as it's a, a like spectacle for the spectators, for the athletes, I think it's so challenging to keep your head in the game for that many days consistently, day in and day out. But we saw a lot of great performances, people staying focused, um, some records that we'll talk about later, yes. and um, some big races, some head-to-head -head ones tonight. All right, well, let's take a look at all that action. So we started with the men's 200 breast final. That just got the meet started off on an amazing note, like you talked about, a record was set. Yes, men's 200 breaststroke final. We had Kevin Cordes take it out very strong, like he's been doing between prelims, semis, and now finals. We thought we might see a world record out of him, but out of nowhere, last 15 meters, Josh Pernod comes in, big turnover for the win, and our first American record of this meet. A treat for the audience. All right, the women's 100 meter freestyle. Yes, women's 100 free. We have Abby Whitesell. Abby Whitesell out like a rocket. I think we're going to see some really great things tonight out of her and also for her 50 freestyle later this meet. Um, Amanda Weir, 30 years old, closing in for third place. Um, <laughs> Moving right along, the yeah. men's 200 meter backstroke. The men's 200 backstroke, also a really good race. I love seeing these two cowboys go head to head. <laughs> it's something that you know they do in practice day in and day out. And we have Tyler Clary in the mix right. in third place heading into finals. I talked to his parents last night. You know, it's going to be his third final swim of the meet. Hasn't qualified yet. All right, women's 200 meter butterfly. One of my favorite races. One of the most grueling ones out Ruling. there. Absolutely. Something I've actually never done is a 200 fly. <laughs> So Camille Adams <laughs> swam her own race just like the veteran that she is, took it out calm, cool, and collected, brought it home with that closing speed that she's known for. 100% reminiscent of that swim four years ago, doubling up as the champion yet again and punching her ticket. All right, the men's 100 meter freestyle. This was one of my favorite races that we got to watch this last was night. A, this was a, a great race. I was gonna say bananas. <laughs> yes, it really was. We had Nathan Adrian, our heavy favorite, take the win. And we had some great speed shown from Anthony Irvin. Definitely. He really went for it. The oldest swimmer in this meet at 35 years old now punches his ticket for his third Olympic Games. I loved all the emotion that we saw from these guys last night. It was truly just so energetic, yeah. passionate. It was a really fun race to watch, but it was really fun to see the reaction after the race, how legitimately pumped up they are. Yeah, Caleb Dressel right there. You can tell he's getting emotional. His Anthony first Irvin Olympic makes team. His third Olympic team. Yeah. And they said his first one was 16 years ago. <laughs> that was a long time. <laughs> yeah, so that'll be a, a really good relay, very strong relay. All right, men's 200 IM. It was just the semifinals, but it was still just as exciting. Men's 200 IM, watch both of these guys as they bring it home. I think they, they put together good races but each of them shut it down, I would say, in the last 15 meters. Michael, maybe a little bit more so, you see that? <laughs> maybe a little bit more so than Ryan. And Michael even talks about how he knows they're both going to really push it tomorrow night. Here we have Ryan. Um, the groin injury that he suffered from earlier this meet, obviously not affecting him. There he is right. swimming his breaststroke leg. And, you know, that, that they're going to put on a show. Yeah, They've been I doing was really it for years. With yeah. that race. Everybody's been talking about this injury. How's his breaststroke leg going to be? I thought he looked great. Um, we catch up a little bit later in the show with him and David March, and they kind of talk about this injury that he's trying to nurse, and he needs to follow the doctor's orders. So tonight, obviously, going to be a very exciting race. The first time that we're going to see the Fels versus Lochte. Obviously, a lot of fans are getting excited for that race. But before we get to that, I just want to kind of touch on what we said about Anthony Irvin, Camille Adams, seeing so much emotion last night. So I had the honor of getting to interview the Olympians after they qualify. Camille Adams, her response was so heartfelt. And when she looked into the camera and says, I'm Camille Adams, I'm a 2016 Brio Olympian, she literally got choked up, like just tears. And the whole audience is like, oh, like everybody <laughs> wanted to start crying. And then you get Anthony Irvin. So Tony gets on the mic and a character, right? I said, so Tony, first, uh, third Olympics, first one was 16 years ago. You know, where do you keep finding the speed? He just takes the mic out of my hand. He's like, well, it all started eight years ago. And he just gets into this passionate story and about inspiring the next generation. And, and if I can't do it, who will? And the crowd just goes crazy. So last night, it was just so priceless to see all these raw, raw emotions on the pool deck. So obviously, raw emotions. <laughs> Let's get back to the men's 200 IM with Lochte versus Phelps. 
Here's what they have to say about the race. I've been racing against him in this event since like 2003, so he's a tough competitor, and then, you know, I just love racing against him because it's a challenge. During the big meets, we, we have great races, and, and uh, you know, we're right there with each other tomorrow. Uh, the middle of pool, probably ten, a couple of tenths a, a part, and it's going to be good. You know, I mean, we're going to be out and probably step on the gas a little bit more than, than, than we have in the past. And I think it's one of the greatest rivalries in sports. Uh, me and him, just from what we've both done in the sport of swimming. So. Uh, even if he is hurt, he's not only he's going to let anything be an excuse. You know, I mean, him and I together, we've had a, a pretty decent um, rivalry back and forth, and then we've been able to, to really push each other. So, you know, I would expect that too. All right, Carolyn. I like question. that. <laughs> Who's your money on? Phelps or Lochte? Phelps or Lochte, I, I'm going to have to go with Phelps. I think he's been looking sharp at this meet, even right. though Lochte is our world record sure. holder. I think Phelps is, is going to put out a really special race. I like how Ryan said it's one of the, the greatest rivalries in yes. sports. Definitely and is. I, I think there's a lot of truth to that. And it's the last year we'll see it, too. It is. Like, this the is fans are going to be on their feet. The end. <laughs> yeah, fans are going to be on their feet tonight. It's going to be a packed house, and I think everyone's going to be really excited about that All right, race. so that's tonight's excitement. Let's talk about this morning. So this morning we have four prelims on the schedule. Ledecky in the 800 freestyle, obviously going to be spectacular. Yeah, Ledecky is going to be in the 800 freestyle this morning. We have Leah Smith. We have Sierra Rungi, who's also punched her ticket. So it'll be a good race how, to see how this one unfolds. We have prelims this morning, and the way the 800 for women and the mile for men are swum, it's prelims in the morning and then finals the next day. So they don't swim semifinals. They get a little bit more rest to recover from that long race. Yes. <laughs> so it'll be a good final tomorrow night. And we have that 100 butterfly. Phelps and Lochte swimming this, or do we, who do we have in the 100 fly? 100 fly, we're going to see Phelps out there. We're going to see Tom Shields. Oh. Tom Shields, who finished second in the 200 butterfly. Right. And Tom actually made a, a great surge at the end of his race. Definitely. So he's actually beat Michael head to head at some point within the last couple years. Oh. He is not afraid of the king. <laughs> so it'll be, it'll be good to see that one unfold. All right, women's 200 backstroke. Women's 200 backstroke, we're going to see Missy Franklin. So if Missy qualifies for this 200 backstroke tomorrow night, that'll be her third event at the Olympics. So a much lighter schedule for her this time around. Right. Um, somebody else that we're going to look at in this 200 backstroke is going to be Elizabeth Beisel. Okay. She has swum this race at the last two Olympic Games. This really is her best event. But an interesting thing about Beisel, she did break her finger. Right. In warm up, she hit hands with another swimmer, bent her pinky backwards. Right. She has a hairline fracture. Wow. She's been resting it for the last couple days, but we'll see how this race goes for her this yeah, morning. She's, she's tough. If there's yeah, one thing about Beisel, she's <laughs> tough stuff. All right, and then one of our favorite races to watch, the men in the splash and dash 50 freestyle. What are you thinking? The men in the 50 freestyle, you can see they're warming up behind us right now. We start the 50 freestyle from the far end, mm -hmm. and we're going to have Nathan Adrian, our heavy favorite. Sure. Caleb Dressel, the American record holder, NCAA champion from this past year. But Anthony Irvin, <laughs> back to Anthony. our old guy, 35 <laughs> years old, Anthony Irvin, and all of the 100 freestyles that he swam from prelims to semifinals to finals showed incredible early speed. Right. So that's going to be, you know how that race goes, though. Yeah. It's blink and it's over. Right. And one thing goes wrong, it Done. can kind of affect your whole race. So I think it's between those two, between Dressel and Irvin, it's going to be who puts together the most perfect race. I ran into one of uh, the trainers for Anthony, and they were saying that they've been really trying to work on his start because that's something that Anthony has definitely suffered from in the past is a little bit of a weaker start. Yeah. So let's keep our eyes and see if his start has improved. Since. Yeah, if you remember finals of the Olympics four years ago, yes. Anthony had the slowest start of the entire field. I think he finished around sixth place. Mm -hmm. An argument could have been made that he would have start. been a medal contender had his start improved. And he's been around the block. He's done it all. Yeah. Um, I definitely don't count him out in this 50. All right, well, day six, a lot to look forward to. Carolyn, thank you for joining us. My pleasure.